Yo, Butcher Chris Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, again for another video. All right, so today, we're gonna be taking a look at 20 types of Fortnite players that you've definitely come across. All right, guys, so starting off our list, we've got someone we all know much too well, the Sweat Complainer. All right, so this is that player who probably played a good amount back in the OG days, only to take a long break and get deleted in every fight they take once they hop back on. This player is constantly reminiscing about the days when building was only used for bases and the main skill gap was sheer gun skill. I mean, there's definitely something special about the early era of Fortnite, don't get me wrong, but I mean, you can't expect everybody to remain at the same skill level for years. All right, guys, so just like the sweat complainer, we also got the player who was constantly complaining about the meta and the decisions made by Epic. Bro, people don't phase through my builds when I'm like against the P90. Although I'm sure we can all relate to this, this player is gonna go to extreme lengths to tell everybody how the game is broken and Epic is just out to get them. This player refuses to admit their mistakes and will always shift the blame off themselves. This next player is quite the opposite. Right? This player seems to think that Epic can do no wrong and that every decision they make is for the best. This player could just wake up to a whole new season where everything is just vaulted except for the combat SMG and claim that Epic is just being innovative. Are you serious? Obviously, it's not just good to bash on a company, but sometimes some constructive criticism is needed in order to make a more balanced, enjoyable game. All right, so regardless of the meta, man, there's always going to be those arena grinders out there who's gonna make it their mission to end up on that hype leaderboard. These players will play for 10 plus hours a day just to keep their spot at the top for some extra recognition. Okay, so they're almost always are gonna play trios and will play every game like it's the FNCS Grand Finals in order to not lose any points. All right, I gotta admit this though, like this definitely takes some hard work and dedication and can definitely end up paying off if you market yourself correctly. All right, so on the opposite end of the spectrum, just like you saw at the beginning of this video, we have the Creative Warrior. Uh, so this player will almost never touch an arena game and spends all their time playing zone wars and box fights with friends. Look, I get it guys that the meta in the current state isn't the best, but I don't see how switching back and forth from two or three creative modes could be any more fun. I mean, don't get me wrong, creative is a great way to improve your fighting abilities, but what's the point if you're never going to put those skills to use in an actual game? Good question, right? So similar to the Creative Warrior, there's the Token Player. A token is basically just a wager disguised under a different name since Epic made them against their terms of service. Unlike the good old days, man, when players like Clicks and Booga would just make these matchups interesting, Token Players today will play every round like their life was on the line. You know, a lot of the time, these fights will come down to who has the most patience to play as scummy as possible without getting in a real engagement. Hey, GG's bro, good fight, man. I really like having a balanced fight. This next player, guys, is kind of like the token player, except they aren't actually good at them. So this is that player who will challenge anybody they have an altercation with to a 1v1, claim that they're gonna whoop them and just put them in their place. I'm literally warming up, so don't say anything. Chill out, chill out. Since this player isn't actually very good, they oftentimes just challenge players to 1v1s with hundreds of dollars on the line. Even though they don't have the funds for this, they're still gonna offer it in the hopes that their opponent will back out. Please don't be this guy, for real. All right, so since we're talking about creative, we need to mention movement players. Okay, so these players are becoming more rare nowadays, but definitely still exist. All right, these are the people who will spend their time in creative, creating unique movement plays that nobody has seen before. It started off with stuff like, you know, the EJ Dash, but has climbed to new heights after the addition of the tactical sprint and mantle mechanics. And so these moves definitely can't be used in real games, but I mean, they're very entertaining to watch. You know, in the same realm of creative, we also have the fast editor. All right, so this type of player is gonna have some insane mechanical skills, but still falls behind when it comes to actually fighting. Fast editors are gonna spend their time going for insane edit course rebuild clips on clip bots that they really make you question how players have gotten to this level. You know, the whole fast editing wave has kind of died out recently, but you know, those who are still grinding have some, you know, mind boggling clips that makes for some great entertainment. So these fast editors are what make being a no builds player acceptable. You know, ever since Fortnite made the no build LTM a permanent mode, tons of OG Fortnite streamers like Tfu and Ninja have made a return to the game. And as a result, a lot of these players who quit back in the day have been hopping back on just for this mode since there's much less of a skill gap. All right guys, bunch of guys me. here we go. It's time for the question of the day. Do you think that the addition of a permanent no build mode was a good decision? All right, let us know in the comments down below. We definitely wanna see what you think. All right, guys, so hopping back into our list, I want to talk about clip hitters. You know, no matter the situation, these players are going to do their best to turn everything into a clip. Like, you could be playing an FNZS round three, and these players will go for an edit course kill in mid-game. On top of just going for clips at inappropriate times, I mean, the clip hitter will beg you to clip bot for them and create every time you play together. I suck! The idea of having fun in the game, I mean, it just sounds foreign to them, and content is always in their mind. 
Right, so just like how clip hitters are going for unnecessary clip, the W keyers are always going for unnecessary fights. These players think they have the best mechanics in the world that's gonna push every player in sight. I mean, some of these players are actually successful doing this, but you know, a lot of them just end up getting slammed. Look, it's good to be an aggressive player. I get it. But sometimes, man, you guys just need to chill and just play for the end game. Okay, so on the other end of the spectrum, we have the campers. <laughs> These players would do everything in their power to avoid a fight regardless of, you know, how bad the opponent is. You know, they're constantly spinning their cash cups in bushes and it's gonna hide dead side the entire game. These players seem to have a decent game IQ and could really make it to the next level if they just put a little confidence in themselves. Okay, so since we're talking about comp, you know, we can't forget about those players always saying this next season is theirs and, you know, they're finally going to start placing. And so these players will start the season off with confidence only to give up a week or so later. Oh, I mean, they'll usually, you know, blame their falling out on the loot pool or just lack of mobility items when in reality, they just aren't at the top level yet. And that's why I say, man, if you don't have confidence in yourself, you're not going anywhere. You got to believe in yourself. Let me say this, man. If you're one of those players who struggled to end this cycle, make sure you head on over to ProGuys.com. I mean, we've got an army, guys, of pro coaches ready and waiting to teach you everything you need to know about Fortnite so you can improve that. So while most players focus on the actual game, there's always that handful of people who only seem to be concerned with the item shop and the cosmetics they own. I mean, these players will turn every match into a fashion show and are just constantly flexing their OG skins. Okay, so if you know one of these players, you've probably had your fair share of being begged for a gifted skin or just some stupid rap, right? Give me that skin now! So since these item shop fanatics only care about cosmetics, they oftentimes just fall under the watch more than play title as well. You know, these players will spend a majority of their time just watching their favorite streamers and pro players. You know, it's definitely helpful to watch other players when you're trying to improve, but these people take it to the whole next level. Okay, so if you manage to play with someone like this, there's a solid chance they're gonna be AFK for a majority of your session. So AFK players are constantly tabbed out into a different window, all while blasting TikTok audios through their mics. I mean, it seems as if the game is just some background entertainment while they just catch up on their social media feed. Okay, so although the AFK player can grow to be annoying, there's nothing worse than the Rager. This player will get annoyed by any minor inconvenience and will completely lose their cool when they end up dying. <laughs> Playing with somebody like this, man, it could be pretty entertaining, but you know, it just definitely makes me worry for their peripherals, right? I mean, keyboards, monitors, or really anything is at risk of being completely destroyed. You know, this next player gonna go through tons of peripherals as well, but for a different reason. All right, the settings changers always change in their keyboards and sensitivities in the hopes of them improving. I mean, they also seem to think that a new keyboard and mouse will instantly just turn them into a pro, when in reality, they just have an expensive habit. All right, guys, so last but certainly not least, we have the bad internet player. These players are always on high ping and will hide out when they get a never-ending stream of red bars on their screen. I mean, they're always claiming they're gonna be a top-tier pro without lagging, you know, really just makes this the primary reason for their lack of success. Well, I have to say this, man, get an ethernet cable, please, I beg you. But Squash Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. I believe in you. I really, really do. And I hope this video really helps you guys out because let me tell you, man, we all fall in at least one of these categories. But you know what, man? We don't have to stay there. We can always keep improving, always grow, to, you know, diversify ourselves. Uh, and we don't have to really have any label on us, but just really good players, you know? So you can do it. Keep working hard. I'm so proud of you. Hey, uh, make sure to connect with my Instagram at Your Motivation Guy. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you on the next one. Peace.